look, um, obviously it's going to be a really big blow for the opposition and Labor. Mike Kelly is a very popular, uh, you know, marginal seat holder. He's done very well in that area for a while. Uh, this is sort of shaping up, uh, Pete, as a by-election which has got a lot to it. We know that oppositions haven't lost a held seat to government for 100 years. Mm. We know Ian Monaro is typically a bellwether seat, a marginal seat. Interestingly, the country party or the national party have never held the seat despite holding some of the state seats within Ian Monaro. So... We know John Barillaro is obviously going to put his hand up. And some Liberals have already put their hand up to a three-quartered contest. Uh, who knows how that shakes out? Uh, it's going to have a lot of spice to it, the government riding high as well, but also mixed uh, views about how the bushfires were handled too. So there'll be a lot to this campaign and campaigning in an age where there won't be a lot of face-to-face -face campaigning. Yeah, well, uh, John Barillaro was on the show uh, around about an hour ago. This was uh, a little bit before the actual announcement came through, but uh, he was already seen to be in campaign mode. Let's have a listen to what he had to say. Uh, I've been lucky enough this year to be appointed the Minister for Bushfire Recovery, and that has allowed me to work in those areas, in the Bega, the South Coast area, that were impacted by the, the worst fires, the, one of the worst uh, natural disasters the state's ever seen. And, I've become very passionate about the broader region that I'm born and bred in. And, uh, but at the end of the day, the, the voters will decide who's best. Uh, everybody who puts their hand up is deserving of a campaign and deserving to pitch a vision. And, you know, the voters will decide who's best placed. So what do you reckon uh, of all the contenders? I mean, the Nationals only got 7% last year, but uh, John Barillaro is, is likely to get more than that. Look, that's right. As I said, the, the history is really against the country and National Party. That said, John is obviously a very popular uh, local member and Deputy Premier. I think part of his appeal will be that um, he's a bit of an anti-coalition national, mm. so he's happy to speak out, even as Deputy Premier, often speaking out against the, uh, his own coalition state government. So that does have a bit of appeal to have someone with an independent streak. And if John was lucky to get there on that popular appeal, it would be interesting then to sort of play it forward to see what impact he would have within the National Party room in Canberra and what that would mean for uh, Michael McCormack as well. And I notice uh, that tash above your lip, James, is that a, a tribute to Mike Kelly? Yeah, I probably should have raised some uh, money for this one, Pete, before going ahead with it. But uh, look, look on, on a serious note, Mike will be a, a big loss for Labor and for the Parliament. A brilliant military career and obviously a parliamentary career as well. So he'll be uh, sadly missed. Yeah, all right. Uh, now on to uh, restrictions and, and the, the continual talk around easing restrictions. Uh, the PM, uh, New South Wales Premier at least, uh, and definitely uh, the Northern Territory Government, uh, are all singing from the same song sheet at the moment. They want to get things uh, reopened ASAP. So what sort of a shot in the arm would this be for the economy? I think it'll be a really important one, but it's, it's one of those things where there's swings and roundabouts. I think uh, the Prime Minister today was alluding to sort of that prolonged stagnation, the potential to extend, for example, the job seeker program if we do see that high ongoing unemployment. I think we need to see it. And it looks like the Northern Territory is going to be the first cab off the rank in terms of that broader lessening of those restrictions, which is really important, really important for confidence to get going and uh, to sort of start to move beyond some of those negative numbers, which unfortunately we're going to have to get used to seeing over the coming months and quarters. And what happens if there is a second wave, if there is a second outbreak? I mean, the CMO was, was saying yesterday that we will be equipped, we will be able to handle it. Can the economy handle it? Because, you know, do we find ourselves in this position where businesses start opening again, but then they'll have to close? I mean... Would, would we go down that road as far as you could tell or would we just try and live with it? Yeah, well, I think the conditions the National Cabinet and the Prime Minister have put in place around uh, the health focus and the testing and the degree of testing hopefully means that if there are future outbreaks, they can be locally contained. But, yeah, to go to your point, if we did have a, a situation where there was a broader outbreak across the country... I think that would really be a disaster and very difficult for the economy to recover from and probably difficult for the government too. Uh, so far, they've been very cool and constructive and methodical in the way they've, uh, they've outlined their response to this. But to sort of have those backward steps, I think, would be really, really difficult for employers, for businesses and for workers. For us to be back in sort of self-isolating for months and months, uh, it would be very difficult and see how we recover and get through it without two, three or four uh, negative quarters of growth. It would be a real disaster.